welcome back everybody and uh, i appreciate your patience uh following that all the way long from the start until now here you have almost reached the end of it and uh, there are many more things which i would be loving to add and keep on adding with the things out there so we'll see that in the upcoming sessions but today we have one important concept out there which can be discussed so the discussion for today would be a uh, ota so what is an OTA in simple words? So OTA stands for over the air. So this OTA has a long history out there and has really uh, turned out to be very effective, a lot much time saving, a lot much uh, manpower saving and has made a great impact. Well, very fundamental thing is like, uh, we humans go ahead and make something, we always have a room to make it better. But just for the sake of perfection, we cannot keep on delaying with the things, right? It's because the ideas evolve by time. So you may want to go ahead and then deploy that particular uh, device or particular uh, system, but then you may come up with new ideas and new way of improvising that thing. So which need to be later updated, which need to be later added into it. But just for the case that you want to keep it completely update, completely up to date, which is never going to be possible because every single day you will have something better coming in. So keeping that in a concern out here, we have this over the air, which makes it a lot much easier. So even after going ahead and completing the deployment or putting that system in work, you can always have a new updates pushed to it. Now, there are multiple ways we can do this. One is that you go ahead and get the devices one by one and connect it to the computer and then upload them with a new firmware or new software or new instructions, which is going to be a time consuming, tedious and a lot of money, which is not a good option to go ahead. So the better way is over the air updates. That is, if this is connected to the internet, I can access this device from anywhere in the world and then I can go ahead and start using it. There is push an update to it. And as soon as it detects that there is an update available, you can, uh, it, that will fetch up and update it. So that will have a new firmware and so on. So this can be used for various different things for getting the new software, firmware or any other things. So my, and you all might have seen your mobile phones, you get updates coming in, right? So what is that in simple? They are just trying to optimize it more better, adding new features which are given to you in time sequence. So similarly, our case also, we may do something today and then tomorrow we may do it much better or in a better way. So we keep doing that thing. So in our concern, uh, there are multiple different uh, implementations of it, software over the air, or you can say uh, provisioning over the air and so on. But we are going to do is FOTA, FOTA. What does it mean? A firmware over the air, which means that we're going to update the firmware for this over the air. Now that is really going to help us to get the things being done in a lot much easier way. So I can uh, upload a firmware today and then tomorrow I may come up with some other use cases or some other better way of doing it. So I can go ahead and update that with the help of FOTA or firmware over the air. I'll be starting with simple implementation first. So this is going to be the simplest of all implementations which will require you to keep this device connected to the same network on which your computer or PC is connected or from the machine from which you're performing the update. So both needs to be connected to the same network. They may need not be connected to the physical network, but they are surely needed to be connected to the same network, fine? So that is what in this when you do it. Remember this point very importantly, you may be doing this and you may not get that options to do it. If this device, that is your ESP32, what I have, so I'm using this device correctly here because uh, this has some issues with this uh, USB uh, port here and all my other ESP32 boards are already into some other uh, development board, uh, like some other works. So even this is one of them. So this has an ESP32 inside it. So it's a kind of a uh, gateway out here, which has a 5,000 milliamps battery and uh, uh, can connect to all the uh, clouds, whatever you mentioned it and so on. So it has a lot of things to do with. It also has an SD card of 16 GB, which can store up to 16 million plus records and uh, for offline storage and many more things. So I'm just going to use this for now, which is in turn having the same ESP32 inside that, remember this. So even if you, you uh, don't really go ahead and worry about like what exactly is in this and so on, that should be really the common normal ESP32, okay? 
So consider that we have an ESP32 here, fine. So let me just get this, got it, right? Now let's do it. So let's get back into the uh, Arduino ID here and start with it. So you get this uh, particular sketch, what you see on my screen right now here by default. So some of you all have requested me to increase the font size while I'm explaining this thing. So I'm going to do that for you right now. I do read your responses and so on. So here we go. You can get this uh, default basic OTS sketch, which is already included into your Arduino ID here. You can get that from the files mm -hmm. and then go to the examples. And then if you scroll down here, so if you have already installed an Arduino, ESP32, you will get this Arduino OTA, basic OTA up there. Once you open this, you will have this code here. I'll quickly take you through the codes, what's happening in this thing. So I'll not go into much depth of this, but yeah, I'll surely go through a quick thing out here. So we have a Wi-Fi outlet, which is going to help us include my Wi-Fi lab library up there. And then we have a DNS kind of a DNS. So this will help me to get this DNS path. And then uh, we have a UDP, which will help me to uh, transfer the files over the air uh, that is like a data protocol. So this is the UDP we have out there and then Arduino OTA, which will handle the complete OTA part of it. I'm defining this SSID in the password. So this is my Wi-Fi router password, I have given it. I'm beginning the uh, sealed communication at 11.5 to double zero baud rate. Uh, printing the booting up, of uh, starting the Wi-Fi in the station mode, okay? Wi-Fi station and beginning the uh, Wi-Fi connectivity with the given SSID and the password. While it is not connecting, I'm writing uh, like after five seconds, e connection fail and rebooting it and calling the ESP dot restart, just restart the thing. So here there are a few uh, commented sections here, which is like you can hit, set the port to any other ports, but by default it is to 3232. You can also set the host name, you can also set the password, you can also set the hash code of that for added security also. And though uh, those are commented uh, recent features, but I'm going to use them for now, fine. Now uh, on start, that is, I'm calling the Arduino OTA and on start, I'm seeing like if Arduino get command is on flash and type is of sketch, else type is of file system. If any of these, what I'm doing is start print, start updating and give the type of it. And on end print, end it, end it. Okay, on print, end it, end it. And I'm also printing the percentage that is progress. What is the progress happening? So in percentage here, and if this case, I'm just also handling some errors here. If this in case there is some errors happening, so if the error is like authentication error, then I'm giving authentication fail. And if it's so a uh, beginning error, then I'm beginning begin fail, connecting fail, receive fail, and end fail. In any of these scenarios happens, I'm just uh, uh, using the if else condition to handle those errors. And then calling the OTA begin. And if it is uh, like once, this, this is a scenario, if the uh, OTA starts, okay? Normally, ready, an IP address, like if it is getting connected to the Wi-Fi, which is here. So if it's connected, so I'm printing this, uh, or serial print ready and IP address and printing the local IP address. In the void loop, I have a RNA OTA handle, which is continuously handling the OTA part. Uh, I'll remove this from here right now. So I'll, I'll remove this, okay? Because this is a, a first sketch. So this is all about the first sketch. Now, let me go to the tools out here and then I have the Arduino here, COM3. So it is my uh, ESP32 itself against this, ESP32 dev module, same thing. And uh, everything no co normally common as we have it. I'll upload this code quickly out here. So once I upload this code, uh, there's some more things to be considered. Like now I'm uploading the code, which is having the OTA functionality implemented into it. All right. Next time when I upload some other things out there, I would add some extra things into it, but make sure that the, this part, this mechanism is already present into it because this mechanism is required. It's like, OTA part should always be there no matter what program you're writing it, okay? This part should always be there so that in future, if you want to handle any uploads, you have to get this, okay? So I'm uploading this code here. So I will press this. And I remember that in some other, uh, most of the new boards, you don't really need to do this. That is, you need not press this, okay? So yeah, then uploading here. And uh, you can see this, my uh, sale monitor sees something out there. So let me just show you the seal monitor. So see so this seal monitor sees uh, updated ready and IP address is connected to this, fine. So once this has been ready, make sure that the Wi-Fi with your uh, machine is connected, that is laptop or computer, and the RV is connected, this one is ready to, is in the same network. So if I 
uh, C, uh, my is connected to Alimad itself, and even my, this one is connected to the same. So both are in the same address. So now once that has been done, you can go to the tools and go to the port, and then you should see something like this. It says network port, there is one network port available here, which says this is 32, dev module onto this particular IP address. So compare the IP addresses with this, it's the same one, which means that that's the same device out there. So I'll select that one now. I'll select this one now. Fine. So I have changed the board now. Remember, I have changed the board, uh, like port uh, port to ESP32. So this is connected to the same network. And even the machine is connected to the same network. So I've changed this thing out here. Now let me add some changes. And remember, whatever the changes you add, you add it. It's up to you. But make sure that this mechanism, what is there right now, that is the OTA part should be there. Because if you don't remove this thing, the next time you will not be able to update it. Fine. Okay? This time you will be able to update it because currently this ESP32 has this mechanism. So you'll be able to update it. But if you remove this now, then you will not be able to update the next time. So what I'll do is I'll just write one line here. I'll just make one line here, serial.begin. And uh, sorry, serial.println. Print ln. And I'll just write here. This is version two. Fine. I'm just writing this thing and I'll let me upload this. Remember now, it's tool is this is port number is not connected to the COM3. Remember, so there is nothing of USB part now. It's connected over the network that is network port. I'll upload this again now. Okay. And this time I should be able to upload this. And while you're doing this, it may ask you for it a uh, Java kind of access like admin access kind of a thing you need to allow that access okay remember that uh it has already asked me earlier so it, it doesn't ask me again but if you are it asks you please do that you get that enabled okay allow the access to it and with this everything should work perfectly fine and everything should go ahead well let's just have a look at this and see what happened here i'll open my uh okay i have closed this thing also i'll open my this is it says uploading other okay, which means that the file is getting uploaded right now so I'll just increase this uploading right now, 39. And you have seen the percentage, right? 50%, 52%, 54% and so on. It's perfectly good. So it is uploading. You need not press anything here. It's over there. It's updating. Fine. So it's 182, 9500. Great. So done uploading. Awesome, right? It says done uploading. Let me just open the serial monitor here. So serial monitor is not separate on network port. So if we cannot have the serial monitor coming in the the network port because that is only available via the serial communication out here so we have successfully uh uploaded this let us cross check now okay let us cross check so what i'll do is i'll go to the tools and then uh change this to com3 change this to com3 so now it is connected by the com3 and i'll open my serial monitor and let me just show it to you that it is updated so if you just have a look at this so this it it is now updated so this, this is version 2 it is now updated as we expected it, right? So it has updated over the air. So let us say that uh, you have a you have made a system, you have made a home automation system, or you have made something uh, which is uh, handling some of your appliances or some of your uh, uh, things, or smart windows, or smart doors, or smart bed, whatever you have done it, whatever you have done it, and they are connected to your home network. Okay. So whenever you want, you want to update them. So you can use this simple way of doing it. So this way you can easily go ahead and update. It. Like it need not be connected to the same network itself. Sorry need not be connected to the computer itself. If they're in the same network, you can update them. It is also showing me timestamp because I have checked this. So don't get confused with that. I have checked this. That's the reason it's showing me the timestamp and I have not given any delay here. Uh, it's preferred that you don't give a delay because what happens is like when you give a delay here, so Arduino OTA will be checking that handle. Just in case like you have a request when it was in delay, that will be uh, not taken up. So you can check out your preferences. You can check out like what happens with the changes out there and you should be getting to know it more. So that's all for this video out here. And I hope you have uh, enjoyed this and you got to know what exactly you can do with this. So this should ease out your updates and so on. Uh, if they are connected to the same network within the same local network it is available, then that should really help you ease it. So in the next video, we'll see like, how can we go ahead and do it uh, other way around out there, even if it is connected to some other network and so on. We'll see that out there and uh, we'll explore all the further things. So. Let me know in the chat box if you have felt awesome about this and what I have, have implemented this or not and for what I have implemented. I'll be loving to uh, read your thanks. So I'll see you in the next video.